Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. It's Terry and it's time for me to do a repot on this boba film that I pulled out of the greenhouse this morning. That is my boba film in Garuda. And as I pointed out this morning, the, bulb, the bulbs, you can see they are shriveled. The newest growths are already looking weak. This I believe was an aborted new growth. It flowered uh, over the winter and the fall from this growth and then immediately put up this growth, which is still maturing. So it's not in that bad of a shape, but it also tried to put up this growth from this puny looking pseudobulb, which I've never seen anything like that before put up a growth. But anywho, I am going to pull this out of the pot with you. First of all, I'm gonna wash my hands just to make sure that I'm not passing on any viruses to my plants. Joke, joking aside, So that's taken care of while I'm doing that. I'm gonna go ahead and do my scissors, although what I'm gonna do first is I'm just going to work with this one first because this doesn't need a repot. This is a recent repot. This was repotted in January. And this is my Bulbophyllum kinolabium crossed with Bulbophyllum carunculatum. So the name of this one is, uh, is it Wilbur Chang? Yeah, Wilbur Chang. Uh, this bloomed once for me very nicely, and then it's put up a lot of nice growths, but it's never rebloomed for me. Um, like I said, it's a recent repot. So what I noticed on this is I like these pots that are shallow. Um, so there's a layer of peanuts in there, and then there's bark and a little bit of sphagnum in there. What I want to do is put a little more sphagnum because I can start to see gaps in between there just to fill it in. So I've already got some sphagnum here, although I also have, oops, one second. Doesn't this always happen at least once? So, but I also have this sphagnum that's soaking in water that's rehydrating in case I need it. But for this one, I just need a little bit. And all I'm going to really do is tuck some in around the roots like that. Well, not that much. Let me... in a little bit closer without this turning into a major ordeal. What I'm trying to show you is just where I'm placing the spider moss around the roots. Just kind of securing it in here because directly under here is basically just the peanuts. I want it to have really good drainage as far as drainage out of the bottom of the pot. And I also want it to keep some moisture around the roots. Now I know I've watched um, some of Bill Tom's videos um, and how he, he over, over summers his big specimens outside around his pool, shaded of course, but hangs them high up. And most of them are in straight sphagnum moss. Hopefully you're seeing what I'm doing, but I'm just kind of tucking, tucking the moss in. And it's further securing the plant in there as well. And that's pretty much all that I needed to do for that one. That's really it. So I'm done with that. Okay. So let me see if I can position this up a little bit better for this next one. Bear 
with me, please. And thank you. Okay, that should work. That should be okay. So, here I've got the plant. And I'm just going to remove it from the pot. Trying to be as gentle as I can. See, that's the plant right there. That is the entire plant. And I'm going to gently tease this old sphagnum from these roots. And also, while I'm doing it, I'm probably going to, well, I know I'm going to, I'm going to get rid of some of these old dried bulbs. Careful not to mess with those roots too much. And I am, I think that's the sphagnum that's doing that cracking sound. Hopefully I'm not being too destructive because bulbophyllum, their roots are very fine. Sometimes, probably would have been better if I would have uh, wet the pot, to be honest. I know somebody's going to mention that to me in the comments. And you're right. You are so right. I should have. Hopefully I am not doing this too much off camera. <laughs> because I'm sort of doing it blindly, just kind of looking back and forth as I'm doing this, but paying more, more attention to the actual plant. Sorry if um, I'm doing it too fast or if... Uh, okay, so I think that's good. I mean, I, I may... Well, this is dead, of course this so I could probably include this in there because it did try to put a new growth out I don't think it would be too successful if I potted this up by itself um, it does have roots though but I'm going to just put it on back in the pot Yeah, that's what I'm gonna do. So, get all this other media out. Yeah, I'll just dump it all out. But I'm gonna reuse these peanuts, you know me. And I'm gonna reuse the pot. I don't see any insects or any, I mean, it does need to be this is not scale what I thought that this was. It's just dried sheath. You see that? It's not scale. It's just a dried sheath that's just withering away. I had thought that it was scale. That's not scale. See, there's nothing there. Um, so I'm not even going to rinse it off. It'll get rinsed off as I water it because pretty soon, well, this won't go outside, but I'll just give it a nice drink and it'll rinse off naturally and I typically don't like these pots for bulbos but this has nice drainage around the bottom which is great and you can see that there's not a lot of white uh, you know residue from the fertilizers so it's getting flushed a lot pretty getting flushed pretty good so I've got the peanuts in there and I'm going to get some of this other them over here and I'm gonna put a layer over this because I ultimately want the roots as they go down to get a solid layer of sphagnum after let me skip this back sorry I'm like in your grill there but I want it to have as the roots 
go down into the bottom of the pot, I want them to get a, have a nice layer of sphagnum that'll keep a little moisture before they get to the peanuts, which will be completely dry. So I need some bark. And then I'm just gonna set the plant without the old media, of course. I'm just gonna set the plant on top like such. And I'm going to tuck some sphagnum in here around that way, making sure that I get those roots and tuck some in this way because definitely this likes the moisture when it's growing. And this grows pretty much all year round. A little bit less in the summer, but it's definitely in growth in the fall and the winter, which is when it blooms. So, I'm assuming that these new growths will be the ones that will put up the next flower spikes come the fall. That's a not a lot, but I usually plant my bobos in straight sphagnum moss. And so I just think the layers will give it the drainage it needs and it'll get the moisture that I'm trying to achieve here. So, I mean, that's great. Where's my little, here we go. So I'm just going to get some sphagnum, make sure those roots have some of this on them like such and I'm just going to set it right there gently is beyond the seedling and now it's apart from the mother plant separated but in the same pot so we'll see how that does that's what I did there it is over there it's got sphagnum wrapped around it with uh, bark on top of it to hold it down and that's my repot yeah that's good that is good that is that little floppy that is secure in that pot. And folks, I thank you for watching. The only thing left for me to do is to put the tag, date it, which I will do right now. Once I find my pencil. And why can't I find my pencil? It's not where it's supposed to be. So, okay, well, you will, in theory, I'm writing the date on it putting the tag back in the pot. I'll give it a nice water through both of those and then let them sit until I see some growth. If I see excessive shriveling, I'll give them a little drink, but not a full on soak until I start to see some new growth. Again, thanks for watching folks. Wash your hands and stay home and enjoy your orchids. Bye.